How's it going lads? It's the Bald Boomer Biosparks with another Burning Crusade classic video. And today, I'm going to cover one of the most famous 3v3 team compositions back in the Burning Crusade, which was the Rogue Mage Priest. We'll be looking at key information such as how each class plays its role in the team, strengths, potential weaknesses, and race choices that you may want to consider. Personally, I like to consider four areas whenever I look at arena compositions, which are survivability, kill pressure, control, and longevity. Survivability is measured against how well a team can survive bursts of damage, as well as considering things like health and armor values and escape capability. Kill pressure is how well a team is able to create situations in which they can secure a kill with bursts of damage or a chain of crowd control, and how often they can take advantage of this. Control is measured by how a team is able to dictate a match into their favor, so this would include forms of crowd control, how they command areas of space within the arena floor, and things like draining mana. And longevity is how well a team fares the longer a match progresses, which takes into consideration mana conservation and cooldown management, since some team compositions prefer shorter matches and others become stronger the longer a match drags on. Looking at these categories, the Rogue Mage Priest scores a 5 out of 5 in survivability since all the classes have ways to mitigate or escape incoming damage. They have a 5 out of 5 in kill pressure with their ability to exploit bad positioning very easily and severely punish misplays by their opponents. A 5 out of 5 in control since they have a vast range of abilities to lock down their opponents which are also on separate diminishing returns. Lastly, their longevity is average with a 3 out of 5 since the Rogue Mage Priest team want to end their matches as quickly as possible. They will start to run into issues against teams that are able to outlast their damage output and mana conservation the longer a match drags on. Overall, Rogue Mage Priest teams do very well in these categories and it is a very strong composition to run. However, you can't just play any old way and expect success in this team as it will push your PvP skills to the limit to perfect the execution, timing and teamwork to play at a very high rating. We'll now take a closer look at the roles of each class within the team and how they contribute towards becoming cogs in a well-oiled machine that will ensure success in the arena. Starting with the Rogue class, you have to think of Rogues as the playmakers within the team. Rogues have a wide range of abilities that help control and set up situations where they can help the team secure kills and they can make riskier plays as well since they have various ways to avoid damage and escape bad situations. They can also help lock down enemy spellcasters when the mage has counterspell on cooldown. Their key abilities are stuns with cheap shot and kidney shot, incapacitate such as sap and gouge, and a disorienting effect with blind. The only abilities that share diminishing returns here are Sap and Gouge, meaning that these abilities are very powerful forms of crowd control, which can be used to great effect. Rogues also have a silence effect with Garot, and Kick with good timing is also a very powerful silence. Once you have the Gladiator Gloves, you can use Deadly Throw to interrupt from range as well, but you'll need at least one combo point on the target to do so, so it can be limited in its usefulness. Poisons also have a role to play, with 5 stacks of Wound Poison providing the Mortal Strike effect for the team. Mind Numbing and Crippling Poison are also very useful to use as well. A skilled rogue will be able to seamlessly swap out weapons mid-fight and apply these poisons when necessary. Learning when and where to use these abilities will be essential to creating situations that will help the team secure kills. A rogue's overall damage isn't extremely high, but it is reliable and consistent because of abilities like Shadow Step, which help them stick to their targets, which will complement the burst potential that the mage provides. Along with contributing a high amount of control for the team, Rogues have excellent survivability that can be relied upon in sticky situations. Stealth prevents the rogue from being seen in the opening stages of the match. Vanish can be used offensively or defensively depending on the situation, so the rogue can either escape or set up a play to secure a kill. Sprint will provide the rogue with excellent mobility, and Shadow Step can be used to bait opponents with good timing, take a less predictable escape route, or help you stick to a target that's trying to evade you. Evasion is excellent against melee classes, providing an extra 50% chance to dodge, and decent against range giving 25% chance to miss. And to top everything off, Preparation is able to reset all these cooldowns, ready to be used again in quick succession. Cloak of Shadows is an excellent ability which removes all harmful spell and poison effects off you and gives you a 90% chance to resist incoming spells for 5 seconds. And Cheat Death stops a killing blow from landing and reduces incoming damage by up to 90% depending on your resilience for 3 seconds. And they are both only on a 1 minute cooldown which is pretty crazy. All these things will help the priest immensely in keeping the rogue alive in case you are focused down. The next team member is the mage. They are the heavy hitters of the team. While their main purpose is to provide the kill pressure, they also have other important roles which can't be ignored if the team wants to be successful, such as putting pressure on healers with their threat of crowd control and silences, and limiting the mobility of their opponents with their frost spells. The mage is able to provide devastating shatter combos with their frost bolt and ice lance on frozen targets. When a potential kill is in sight, they can also use Icy Veins for 20% faster cast speed to unload more damage. 
The mage should try and use this combo wherever possible to keep up a high amount of kill pressure on enemy teams. Mages bring a lot to the table when it comes to control. Their slow and immobilize effects from Ice Armor, Frostbite, and two Frost Novas that can be used alongside their Water Elemental can help peel for themselves and their teammates to create space or set up a Shatter combo. Polymorph can be used to remove the sting from an opponent's burst potential, or provide breathing room for the team, or crowd control a healer while setting up for a kill. Their management of Counterspell is also very important. If timed correctly, the Silence effect is devastating against healers that are desperate to try and keep their teammates up or the mage can use it as a blanket silence as part of a chain of crowd control. A well-timed spell steal is also very useful depending on what sort of matchups they are up against, and can assist the priest in dispelling their opponent's key buffs. The frost mage has some excellent survivability in their toolkit. Ice barrier absorbs incoming damage and can be stacked with power word shield if they are being focused by an enemy team. The cooldown management of blink is very important for the mage to master as well, as they can escape stuns, reposition for offensive pressure, or keep melee targets at a distance. If things start to look bad, Ice Block puts you in stasis for up to 10 seconds, wiping all debuffs and providing invulnerability. However, you'll have the Hypothermia debuff which will prevent you from using Ice Block again for 30 seconds. Finally, Cold Snap resets the Frost spell cooldowns which adds to your survivability and damage output as well since it affects Icy Veins. For longevity, mages have Mana Gems and Evocation that they can use if they start to run low in mana to keep themselves going. However, since these are on 2 and 8 minute cooldowns respectively, they can still run into mana issues if the match drags on. Mages can try and drink if mana starts to become an issue, but good teams will prevent this from happening as much as possible, and if the mage is drinking then there isn't much pressure being applied to the enemy team either. The final member of the team is the priest. They are the pillars of support that bring a large amount of utility to keep the rogue and mage going, and they have the ability to impact the flow of a match in very pivotal ways. Without the priest being able to do these roles effectively, the team will start to flounder once they start facing higher rated opponents. The priest has a diverse toolset that helps their team dictate the pace of a match. They can dispel magical effects defensively as well as offensively, which can disrupt opposing teams in a huge way. To top this off, they have mass dispel to remove paladin bubbles and ice blocks which can deny opposing teams breathing room if they are caught unprepared. Enemy healers in particular have to constantly be aware of their position, as the priest can deny space on the arena floor with the threat of mana burn, which can be devastating if a few of these casts land successfully. Having access to an instant cast area of effect fear allows the priest to play aggressively when the team wants to apply pressure, or it can be used defensively if they or their teammate are being focused down. Mind control also adds another layer to the priest's ability to control the game. This is particularly effective in Blade's Edge arena since the priest can mind control a target and run off the bridge. This results in throwing the positioning of an opposing team out the window and can easily lead to securing a kill if it's executed well. Priests have a wide array of healing options to assist in keeping the team alive. Powered Shield absorbs a decent amount of incoming damage. They also have a heal over time with Renew, Direct Heals with Flash Heal and Greater Heal, and Prayer of Mending if damage is being spread out amongst the team. Pain Suppression is an amazing ability that can nullify incoming damage massively and can help you survive a coordinated burst or if the priest really needs to keep themselves or their teammates alive. The priest is able to deliver decent damage with spells such as Smite, Mind Blast and Shadow Word Death to assist the Rogan Mage, apply pressure and secure kills. Shadow Word Death is also very useful because it can be used to bounce some damage back to you and break an incoming polymorph. Since the priest is able to use Renew and Power Word Shield to keep the rogue and mage alive, stacked with their own survivability toolkit, it allows the priest to be very active in the match, providing kill pressure by dispelling buffs and contributing with some damage without having to worry if the rogue or mage get burst down before being able to react. For longevity, the priest only has access to the Shadow Fiend, which will chase down a target and replenish mana for the priest every time it hits that target. Try and make sure the target is not able to run away easily, or if used on the bridge in Blade's Edge Arena, the target can jump off, forcing the Shadow Fiend to use Pathing that will result in not regenerating any mana for you. If you're considering running Rogue Mage Priest on the Horde Faction, I would recommend all three classes to be undead. Since you will run into a lot of Warlock teams and other Rogue Mage Priest teams, having Will of the Forsaken will allow the team to play very offensively, which complements the team composition very well. On the Alliance, you would want to have a Dwarf Priest, since their racial synergize very well with the Priest class. Human Rogues will give you the advantage against other stealth teams with Perception and let you start matches in your favour if you manage to detect the other Rogue. And no Mages with Escape Artist adds to the survivability capability of the Mage. If you want more detail on race and class combinations, I have a link to a video below discussing this topic. So with everything mentioned before, we can see why the Rogue Mage Priest team can be so devastating with their high damage output, many forms of crowd control on different diminishing returns, and various different survivability tools. 
this team composition is considered by many to be one of the best teams to run in 3v3. Their strengths come from being able to methodically target a specific member of the enemy team while laying down pressure through crowd control, which forces them to use their PvP trinkets or defensive cooldowns to try and survive. Rogue Mage Priest teams are able to seamlessly switch between targets if they spot an enemy out of position or have forced someone to use defensive cooldowns and exploit that window of opportunity to burst them down. This is a team that wants to unleash a relentless assault on their opponents and overwhelm players who are not prepared for them. Another advantage this type of team has is since they prefer shorter games, they can climb the rating ladder to rapid pace if they're able to get some win streaks under their belt, compared to other teams that tend to drag out matches over a longer period of time. With so many strengths at this team's disposal, does this mean that this team composition will steamroll through every other team type? Well, Rogue Mage Priest is not undefeatable by any means. One key weakness with Rogue Mage Priest teams is their longevity. The longer a match drags on with the team having used their cooldowns, their kill pressure tends to dwindle quite significantly. This isn't to say they can't win in long games either, but there is a reason why this team prefers to have short matches, since when they have access to all their cooldowns, they are at their most dangerous, especially to exploit mistakes by the opposing team, as well as put their crowd control to maximum effect. If a team is able to survive their burst in the early stages of a match, and force the priest to become mana starved, then things will start to look up for them. This is especially true when facing double healer teams, since they have the most potential to outlast and swing the match into their favour. Hunters in particular can be a problem, since priests have no way to remove Viper Sting, other than dwarves, but once that stone form has been used up, they are still vulnerable to that mana drain. If the priest is able to successfully line of sight the hunter consistently, then the mage is also another target that's susceptible to Viper Sting. Rogue Mage Priest teams require excellent teamwork and communication to play at a high level, so if you are against a team that messes up their crowd control, then you'll have an easier time since Sap, Blind and Polymorph break if any damage is done to the targets, but this isn't something you should hope for once you're facing high rated teams. So if you're against this team composition, you'll want to try and drag out the match for as long as possible, forcing them to use their cooldowns. Depending on your team type, you'll either want to try and focus their Rogue or Mage since it will disrupt their ability to put pressure on you if they can't work together and this will also make the Priest focus more on healing rather than taking a more offensive role in the match. In most cases, I wouldn't recommend focusing on the Priest since this will leave the Rogue and Mage to have free reign to harass your team with their crowd control and burst, and the Priest also has some very strong defensive abilities to buy time. You'll want to keep in mind where the Priest is at all times. If your team is close together, this makes you vulnerable to a Fear Bomb and Frost Nova, so you want to try and keep the fight moving as much as possible. This will force the mage and priest to constantly be looking to reposition to gain line of sight of you. You'll also want to try and land a slowing effect on the priest whenever you can. This will allow your healer to position well and hinder the offensive pressure of the priest. If you're a healer, make sure you're not in a position to be mana burned, and keep an eye out for counterspell or kick from the mage and rogue. This means that fate casting and instant casts are your friend here. If the mage is allowed to free cast, keep in mind that you'll be vulnerable to polymorph if you're in line of sight. Don't expect to end the game until Pain Suppression has been used, so don't be greedy and overextend to try and secure a kill until their key defensive cooldowns such as Ice Block and Cheat Death have been used. These are just some general tips, since it's impossible to cover every single team composition that will face the Rogue Mage Priest. But I would advise that at some point you sit down with your team and come up with some pre-made plans to deal with this team composition, since it will be a very popular one throughout all seasons of the Burning Crusade Classic. If you're on the same wavelength as your teammates, you'll all have an idea of what you'll be trying to do and can react accordingly during the match. And as always, staying calm and communicating effectively with your team will be paramount to beating the Rogue Mage Priest. That's all for now concerning the Rogue Mage Priest. If there's a particular team composition you'd like me to cover in the future, let me know in the comments below. Thank you very much for watching, and if you enjoyed the video, I'd appreciate a like or even a subscription if you want to see some more Burning Crusade Classic content in the future. This is the Bald Boomer by Sparks, signing out. Catch you lads next time.